There are many different categories in art and design, and what some of them encompass is a bit more obvious than others. I graduated this year with a degree in illustration, but what is illustration exactly? Keep watching and I'll do my best to explain. Let's start with the term art and design. What do I mean by that? Well, generally, as with most creative things, there isn't one recognised definition of the concept. I'd say that art is more about expressing yourself and it's maybe a bit more ambiguous in its meaning, whereas design is more about solving problems and generally working to a brief. Within the area of design, we have what's known as communication design, and at the uni I went to, this included animation, graphic design and illustration. So we've narrowed it down a bit, but what makes illustration, illustration? Well, I would say the main aim of illustration is to tell you something, to communicate an idea. There are many places that illustration can be used, so let's take a look at a few of them. When I say illustration, picture books might be one of the first things that you think of. Generally, these books are aimed at young children and feature illustrations that take up the whole page and accompany the story. Illustrators are usually chosen by art directors, however some artists write and draw their own books. Illustration can also be featured in novels and other books, for example, as chapter illustrations or of key scenes. The practice of including illustrations in books began in the 15th century, where woodcut illustrations were used in early printing presses. Many book covers also feature illustration. And this can be a great way for many elements of a story to be brought together in a visually pleasing way. Editorial illustrations can be found in newspapers and magazines. They're used to accompany articles and serve to highlight particular ideas from the text. Articles might feature just one illustration or they might have several. These illustrations can also vary in size compared to the text. A cartoon is an illustration that's generally not drawn in a realistic style. If a drawing is a cartoon, it's usually meant for satire or humour. A cartoon can also refer to a short series of images that tell a story, and this is what you usually find in a newspaper. Some examples of cartoons include Peanuts and The Far Side. So what's the difference between a cartoon and a comic book? Well, generally, a comic is a much longer story told via sequential images. There are also some comic book standards that don't apply to cartoons. Comic books tend to have a specific page size and a page count for a standard issue, and they usually run in story arcs, as opposed to cartoons which are, on the most part, self-contained gags. The process of creating comic book illustrations has several stages. Sometimes these will be done by one person, but more often than not, each stage is done by a different person. These stages are pencils, inks and colours. The penciler takes the comic book script and lays out the visual storytelling, drawing out the action as well as dressing the characters and framing each panel. The inker then goes over the pencil drawings with ink, and this is where the light and shadow in each panel is defined. Finally, the colourist adds colour to the comic, which helps set the tone of the story. Bright colours will give off a completely different vibe to dark, muted colours. Okay, so that's comics, but what makes graphic novels different to them? Well, graphic novels are longer than comic books. They contain a complete story as opposed to comic books which are serialised. You could say that each comic book is like a chapter, whereas a graphic novel is a whole book. The role of the artists and illustrators involved remains the same. Illustration can also be used to explain and visualise many areas of science. It can help take difficult or abstract concepts and make them more accessible, for example, in science textbooks. A common form of scientific illustration you might be familiar with is medical illustration. These can be used to show dissections and intricate depictions of the human form to be used in study. Biological and botanical illustrations can be used in the same way, and before the invention of photography, illustration was widely used to capture scientists' discoveries. Unlike other forms of illustration, scientific drawings are not so much about the drawing style of the individual, it's about creating accurate imagery that can be used to progress study. Fashion illustration is used by designers to visualise their ideas before producing them with fabric. These illustrations usually begin with a croquis, which is a quick sketch of a figure, and then layers and details of the design are added on top. 
Fashion illustrations don't tend to be drawn to realistic proportions. The figures are usually very thin and elongated and are generally 9 or 10 heads tall, as opposed to the average human proportion of 7.5 heads tall. These exaggerated proportions help display the dramatic nature of designs. Illustration is used in concept art to develop ideas and designs for media such as films, games, comics and animation. This type of work requires illustrators to design things that don't yet exist. For example, a video game environment or the costumes of a character in a film. Concept art goes through many stages as different options and ideas are explored and discussed by the people working on a given project. Once ideas are developed, they are worked into the final designs that we see in the media that we enjoy. Finally, let's look at packaging and posters. Generally, these items are in the area of graphic design, but they might involve illustrated elements that are relevant to the product. An illustrator may be approached by a graphic designer or studio to create such elements, but it's unlikely that they will design the full poster packaging. And this leads us to the question, what's the difference between illustration and graphic design? Well, I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger here. Come back next week to find out the answer. I won't see you then, but you'll be seeing me. Bye for now.